Hey everyone, happy Valentine's Day. Social media has given me the incredible privilege to network with you all, and I've been so lucky to connect with Alex Siberia of Alex Siberia Designs and participate in her digital stamp releases. Now, digital stamps are images you purchase and download to your computer, then print via your personal printer or at your local office supply or print shop. Alternatively, you can download them to your electronic cutting machine, such as the Cricut or Silhouette, and create endless possibilities of projects. Today, I wanted to show you all how to use digital stamps to your advantage and the easiest way to create stunning card projects. So instead of taking you all to my craft mat, I'm going to take you all to my screen first. I'm in my target download folder containing one of the images from her February release called Clematis. I know most people have access to a version of Word, so I'm going to use Word to import the digital stamp, then print the image. I'm making slight alterations to the image by cropping the margins so that I can squeeze two copies of the clematis onto the long side of a full sheet of paper. Depending on your version of Word, you can alter the opacity of the image via the top toolbar and fake no outline coloring this way. However, I'm going to keep this very simple and color with a black outline. Once you have an image arrangement you're happy with and dimensions that suit your project, go ahead and save your work for easy printing later. I'm going to save this as a PDF so that there aren't any formatting changes if you decide to print from an office supply store. Now that I'm ready to print, I'll open the print dialog for my HP PhotoSmart Plus inkjet printer. I want to make sure that I'm printing only with black ink. Your print dialog might be different, so you may have to explore a little bit to get your printer to only use the black cartridge or print in grayscale. I'm going to load a sheet of Nina Desert Storm in 80 pound in the paper tray. My printer takes this weight of paper just fine, uh, but any heavier and my printer won't take it. And then I'll just print the document that I made containing the digital stamps. I can use alcohol markers on my brand of inkjet and there isn't any bleeding, so just make sure your ink can tolerate alcohol markers. However, like I said earlier, I'm going to keep this very simple and I'm just going to use my Faber-Castell polychromos pencils. I have the 36 pencil set and it is just the right amount of pencils for me. I'm going to speed up the coloring process and describe my color choices for these two flowers. I just refer to images online of Clematis. I typically try to go for real color palettes because after all it looks more natural, but I always end up with my own twist on the petals. The reason why I picked Nina Desert Storm over a plain bright white cardstock is because the warmth from the paper takes care of a lot of the coolness that comes from a lot of the cool blues and reds that I chose for my color palette. In other words, Desert Storm is going to give me a more lifelike floral palette. And by using Desert Storm, I can use the white colored pencil as my blender to take the stroked edge off the petals and diffuse the pencil pigment. Aside from the fuchsia and periwinkle petals, I'll add subtle yellow highlights for extra color variation. Then lastly, for the leaves, I'll do a warm gray base with a green wash to help give me a sage looking foliage. Okay, so that's my explanation of my color choices. If I'm missing anything, please let me know in the comments below. I'll put on some music and let you enjoy the coloring. I'll see you in a bit.
I finished coloring this beautiful bouquet. Now before I cut out the image with my swivel knife, I'm going to do a little bit of fine detailing. The really wonderful thing about high quality pencils is that you get full coverage. However, the opacity of the colored pencils does cover up some of the black outline that I printed earlier from Alex's stamp. So I'm going to take this 005 Pigma Micron pen and trace all the outlines of the flower again. The difference is dramatic and much more refined than if you left the image untouched. So I'll add back the freckle details in the digital stamp with a 01 Micron pen and use the uncolored flower as a reference. As for the other bouquet on the sheet of paper, I'll save it for another project. I fussy cut the image with my Fisker's swivel knife without a margin, so I cut right up against the black outline of the stamp. Usually when you do this, you're left with a visible margin of the cardstock underneath. To conceal this and polish the image, I'll use a black alcohol marker with a brush nib. In this case, I'm using Jet Black Altenew Artist Marker and brush along the sides of the cardstock to hide the cardstock exposed along the side. It doesn't look like much on camera, but in person, it's a world of difference, especially if you decide to not use Nina Desert Storm as your background. Then lastly, I'll add black splatters to the background, foam mount the arrangement on top of my speckled background, and add a coordinating sentiment to my arrangement. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video on how to use digital stamps with a little bit of floral coloring. I really encourage you all to support Alex's shop if you're inspired by this card making tutorial. I have a link to her Etsy down in the description box. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, share it with someone who you think would enjoy digital stamps, and subscribe if you're new to my channel. And thanks again to Alex for sending me her newest release. I'll talk to you all very soon, and have the best day.